Hello physics students, this is Dr. Schultz, and in this video lesson we are going to uh, study drag forces and terminal velocity. Uh, this is usually a very popular topic with students because we finally get to address the effects of air resistance. Usually in physics we kind of say that air resistance is negligible, that means you can ignore it, um, and now at the APC level we're going to actually deal with it. Um, air resistance is interesting because it is a force on an object that changes um, with time. And so far, we have not ever really studied any forces that change with time. So we're going to need to use calculus and some new techniques to deal with the effects of air resistance um, and how it works. So let's start off with um, a couple of simple pictures. And I'm going to um, sketch a ball in kind of three different points of its motion. Um, so at the very top position here, we're going to say that that's at a time equal to zero, and the ball is being released from rest in the air. Okay. Now, guys, when we when we imagine this, I'd like you to imagine dropping a, a big old beach ball. Okay. Something that's that's kind of big and puffy, has a big cross-sectional area, and that doesn't really have all that much mass. And you know that, that air resistance is going to have an effect on something like that. Okay. So let's begin by drawing a free body diagram for this ball at the very instant that it, my, my fingers would open up and let go of it. Okay, so, so when my fingers let go of that ball at the beginning and I release it from rest, there is only one force that acts on it, and that is, of course, the force of the weight. So I'm going to draw a vector there and label it W. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, what about air resistance? This is a beach ball. Well, the fact is, is the beach ball hasn't started to move yet. So if it's at rest, the air can't really exert any force on it yet. Now, let's imagine that um, the ball begins to fall. And a small time after I release the ball, it's going to be falling away from me. Now, at this point, air resistance is pushing back on the ball. And of course, it's going to be pushing up on it. So now I'm going to modify my free body diagram. I'm going to start by drawing the weight vector exactly as I drew it before. Same length, same direction. But now I'm going to add another force. And I'm going to call that the drag force. Okay. The symbol it's going to get is a lowercase f, like for friction. And I'm going to call it a drag force because it's basically the force that air or any type of fluid would exert um, as a drag force, which, which means it basically kind of slowing an object down because the object has to push through it. Okay. So at this point, we have um, a free body diagram that, that might look something like this. Now, as the object um, continues to fall, it's going to gain speed. And I hope you can see that that's even happening right here, because the weight vector is stronger than the drag force. And so there is going to be an acceleration that's downwards, and that's going to cause this ball to go faster and faster. However, as the ball goes faster and faster, the force of the air pushing back up on it is going to get stronger. This is a lot like if you were to put your hand out of the window of a car and drive faster and faster, that the, the wind would push back harder and harder. And there's going to be a point at which that drag force is going to be equal and opposite to the weight. Okay, And so these two are going to um, essentially be equal and opposite. And they will cancel each other out. Um, now, what happens in this situation is that the object is now in equilibrium because the forces cancel. However, the object doesn't stop moving, but it merely continues to move at a constant velocity. So what happens here is that you, you end up with a situation of dynamic equilibrium. And the velocity that the object now is moving at is called the terminal velocity. 
In other words, it, it doesn't ever move any faster than that velocity from this point forward. So that is called a terminal velocity. Okay. So this is basically the physics behind things that fall through um, air. Um, I'm just going to go back to each picture really quickly and make a note also about acceleration. Um, if you come back to this first picture and you look at it, I might say, well, what's the acceleration? Um, be careful. Don't say it's zero. <laughs> uh, I, I, I basically let it go. And the free body diagram says that the weight is the force acting on it. So the acceleration of this object in this case is going to be equal to g. Okay, It's not moving, but it's certainly accelerating at the full 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, if you wait to, for a small time, the acceleration is going to be less than g because you've got the drag force acting against the weight. And when you get to this case where you have t which is very large. Um, in this case, the acceleration is equal to zero. And that's why you have this dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so these, these three pictures here are very important for telling the story of air resistance. Now, before we um, actually get into to doing stuff with this, I want you guys to predict um, what the graphs of velocity versus time would look like and what the graph of acceleration versus time would look like for this falling object, starting at a time zero and going to very large times. I'm going to ask the um, teacher to pause the video at this point and um, give you students a few minutes or a minute to, to kind of predict some shapes so you can check with each other. Um, so at this point, please pause the video. And let's come on back here and, and talk about the different graphs, uh, the shapes that you should have. Um, we know for velocity versus time, if uh, there was no air resistance at all, you would expect to see a straight line. So this would be basically no air resistance. And the slope of that line, think about it. The slope of a velocity time graph, well, that's going to be the acceleration. And so this should be a constant slope equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, if you have air resistance happening, I wanted you to predict what that should look like. And what will happen is that the velocity will basically start off and its initial slope will be 9.8 meters per second squared down here. But then, as air resistance takes away from the net force, that force gets uh, that, that velocity is going to kind of level off. And what will happen is, I'm going to draw another dashed line here. You're going to have an asymptote. So this velocity graph is going to be a curve, and the curve is going to approach an asymptote. And that asymptote is going to be the terminal velocity. All right. So I'm going to label that vt, and that's that's the top speed of the object. Okay. So it starts off with the right slope of 9.8, but then it quickly, the slope gets smaller and smaller. Of course, out here, the slope is equal to zero because there's no acceleration. Um, if you graph acceleration versus time, you probably look at our pictures up above, and you could say, well, I begin at 9.8 meters per second squared, but um, eventually the object will lose acceleration and it will approach zero as time goes on. And we're going to show that this shape is actually a curve. It's a downward curve. It's not a line. And um, I guess that's going to take some mathematical proof to show that. But hopefully you drew something that starts at 9.8 and approaches zero as an asymptote. OK, um, so then the next video, we're going to actually go ahead and derive uh, a function for this. So we're going to be deriving v is a function of t. We're also going to derive a as a function of t. And that's the goal for this whole lesson, is to actually do that. And that's going to take some calculus. So we'll be back in a minute.